This is Jeremy Clark of JeremyBytes.com, and today we're going to continue our look at C Sharp generics. This time we'll be focusing on how to use generics in methods and delegates. So just to review, what are generics? Well, they're classes, structures, interfaces, and methods that have placeholders, type parameters, for one or more of the types that they store or use. Now we've already seen these in list of T. They are very common in collections. And last time we looked at how we could use them in interfaces to create a generic repository that will work with any of our different class types. This time we'll be looking at how we can use generic type parameters with methods. So why do we want to use generics? Well, first we get type safety. We saw when we were looking at collections that generic type parameters limit what we can put into a collection and that means we know exactly what's coming out of that collection. They can also help us with performance. When we have value types and reference types, we can prevent the need to box or unbox those types when we're dealing with collections. And of course, we have flexibility and reuse. Last time, we saw how we could use generic type parameters to create a single interface that could work with a variety of different classes. This time we'll see how we can get flexibility and reuse out of our methods by using generic type parameters. So here's the main example that we'll be looking at. Here we have two methods, getPersonRepository and getProductRepository. But what we see here is a lot of similarity between these two methods. In fact, there's only three locations where we can find differences, and those really have to do with the type that we're dealing with. Wouldn't it be great if we can combine these into a single method that will work for both cases? That's exactly what generic type parameters allow us to do. We just need to replace the specifics with our generic parameters. And generic type parameters are also useful in delegates. When we're dealing with link, we deal with a lot of really cool methods. Well, it turns out that things like the where method actually take parameters which are delegates. In this case, func of t source boolean. Well, what's a func? Well, it turns out it's just a delegate that has generic type parameters that represent the incoming parameters and the outgoing return value. We'll be taking a closer look at this so that we can see how we can use these delegates in our own code. So with that, let's jump into the code and see this stuff in action. So here we are in Visual Studio. Let's just review where we left our application. Here we have a non-generic list button and a generic list button. These are the two buttons we talked about in part one when we were talking about collections. The third button is the repository button, and this is what we use to demonstrate using generic type parameters with an interface. So what we're going to do is keep using these objects, but this time we're going to use a factory method to instantiate them rather than doing it ourselves. Let's take a look at what we mean by that. So if we go to our code behind, we see our repository button underscore click event handler. And again, what we were doing previously is newing up a generic person service repository and assigning it to a local variable. Instead of newing up an object directly, we're going to ask a factory method for that. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, we might want someone else to make the decision of the actual type that we're using. In this case, we're going to do dynamic loading, which means we're going to load the type from a DLL on our file system at runtime. So this uses a little bit of reflection, but it can be extremely useful in particular circumstances. Now to keep things simple, we're actually going to go back to our original interfaces. So let's review what we have. So we have an iPerson repository, and if we look at this, we see it has a number of methods, get people, get person, add person, update person, delete person, and update people. And then we have a class that actually implements this interface, iPerson repository. So we're actually newing up a person service repository. And what this does is just acts as a pass through to a WCF SOAP service. Now again, instead of newing this up, we want to use a factory to dynamically load this. Well, I already have a repository factory set up, so let's take a look at what we have. We won't go into all of the details here, but I will give you some places to look at for more information. So let's take a look at this getPersonRepository method that returns an iPerson repository. Now, the first thing that it does is it actually looks in our configuration file 
to try to find a string that's marked as iPerson repository. Let's go to our app config to see what that looks like. So here we have a setting for iPerson repository, and we can see that the value is fairly complex. This is actually the assembly qualified name for a particular type. In this case, this is looking for a person service repository, and it's going to look for it in the generics.repository DLL. If you want more information on assembly qualified names, you can look at my notes on practical reflection. Those are available if you follow the links in the video notes. What this does is it gives .NET enough information to find a particular type by telling it what assembly to find it in. So let's go back to our factory method. Once we have that assembly qualified name, we can actually use the getType method to generate a type object based on that. And once we have a type object, we can use the activator to create an instance of that type. Now activator.createInstance does return an object, so that means we'll have to cast this type to something more interesting in order to use it. And we can see in our very last line, that's exactly what we do. We take our instance and we use the as statement to cast it to an iPerson repository. Now what happens if that instance does not implement that interface? Well in this case, as will return null. So how do we actually use this getPerson repository inside of our code? Well, let's come back here and instead of newing up a person service repository, we'll use the repository factory. And that's all there is to it. Because this getPerson repository returns an iPerson repository, we can assign that to our variable, and then we can use the getPeople method on it just like we were doing before. So let's run our application and make sure that this works. So if we click on the repository button, we do still get the same results that we had before, but the difference is it's actually loading that person service repository dynamically at runtime based on an assembly on the file system. What that means is it would be very easy to swap out that specific repository by dropping in a new DLL and updating our configuration string. So just like when we were talking about our interfaces, we have more than just person objects in our application. We also have products and probably orders and inventory and other things like that. So in addition to the get person repository, I also have a method for get product repository. And we can see this returns an iProduct repository. Now these methods do look very similar. The only difference is in the types, iPerson repository and iProduct repository. So again, in my mind, I start to think about how can I combine these? And it turns out we can do this very easily by adding generic type parameters with a method. So let's go ahead and create a factory that will work with both of these objects. Now I've already stubbed this out and we have a public static class factory. And what we want to do is add a method that will work with both of our repositories. So let's go ahead and get these side by side. So we have a public static class that has a public static method. So let's go ahead and create that public static method. And instead of returning an iPerson repository, we're going to use T. And to give it a more generic name, we'll just call this get. And so what this says is that get will work with any type that we might want to work with. Now, since we're only changing a few items, what I'm going to do is copy the body of the method that we currently have and then update it as appropriate. Now we can see Visual Studio is not too happy at this point because it doesn't know where to find iPerson repository, but that's okay because we're actually going to replace this with our generic type parameter T. Now the other problem that we have has to do with the app setting. Now right now we have iPerson repository in quotes. Now obviously we can't use a static string for this. We need to get the value from our generic type parameter that's coming in. Well we can do that with a couple methods in reflection. So we can just say type of t dot to string. And what this will give us is the fully qualified name of our type. So instead of iPerson repository, it would give us generics.common.interface.iPerson repository. Now you'll see that we do have one other problem, and that's when we're casting our instance as T. 
Now, if we look at the error message here, it says the type parameter T cannot be used with the as operator because it does not have a class type constraint nor a class constraint. Now, what is this talking about? Again, if as is not able to perform the cast, it will return null. What that means is it will not work with value types. It will only work with reference types. Now, right now, we don't have anything specifying any limitations on T, which means it could be either a value type, such as a struct, or a reference type, such as a class. But we can actually add a constraint. So we can actually specify where T is a class. So what we've just done is put a limitation on what T is allowed to be when we use it with this get method. Now constraints is a much bigger topic and it's something we'll want to dive into a little deeper and we'll save that for a future episode. So now that we have our generic get method in place, let's go ahead and do a build and make sure everything builds. And let's go back and use this in our application. So I'm not going to use the repository factory. Instead, I'm going to use our factory.get method. And notice that it does want a generic type parameter. And we can see the constraint that we had that says, you know what, this needs to be a reference type, shows up in our IntelliSense when we're looking at this. Now, since we want an iPerson repository, that's what I ask for. And this is all that I need to do inside the code of my application. Now I do need to make some changes to configuration because like we said before, it's not going to be looking for these same keys. So let's go ahead and just copy and paste these. And we'll say that these are actually going to be used by factory.get. And remember, we'll be looking for the fully qualified name here. Now I'm a little bit lazy, so I'm actually going to go to the interface itself, iPerson repository, and just copy and paste the namespace, generics.common.interface. And we can go ahead and paste that in. And we can do the same thing if we were to use this with our iProduct repository. So now with everything in place, our generic method should work. So again, we're asking our factory to get us an instance of the iPerson repository. Then our factory method is going to look in configuration and say, oh, well, you want a person service repository. Let me go ahead and new one of those up, cast it to an iPerson repository, the T that you asked for, and give that back to you. And when we run our application, we'll see that that's exactly what happens. So we click the repository button and we get the data that we're expecting. And because our factory method has a generic type parameter, T, this method will work with whatever type we give it. So it will work with an iProduct repository, an iOrder repository, an iCustomer repository, or whatever type that we might want to use. And that's one of the really cool parts of using generic type parameters. We get a lot of reuse out of these. Now let's move on and talk a little bit about using generic type parameters with delegates. Now I am a huge fan of link and lambda expressions. If you don't believe it, just check out my website and look for the learn to love lambdas presentation. Now lambda expressions and link go hand in hand, but let's take a closer look at link to see how it actually uses delegates that have generic type parameters. Now what I want to do is add a where statement on my I enumerable of person so that I can do some filtering. So let's go to I enumerable and help and see what we can find. It turns out there's a lot of extension methods on I enumerable. And if we start scrolling through these, we can see that there's a whole lot of extension methods. Link is extremely cool. There's a lot of things to look at, but the one we want is way down at the bottom. So we're going to look at this method here, where T source of func of T source Boolean. So our where method actually has a T source as a generic type parameter. Well, it turns out that T source will be just whatever type our collection is. So in our case, since we have a collection of person objects, that T source will be a person. Now notice the parameter is func of T source Boolean. Let's click into func and see exactly what we have here. So here's our definition of func of t 
T result. Now delegates are another really awesome topic and I do have a full presentation just on delegates. So again, if you follow the links, you'll find those presentation materials as well. The short version here is we see in our definition, we have func of in T out T result. And what that means is T is our parameter for our delegate and T result is the return value of our delegate. So if we go back to our where, what this means is we need to provide a delegate that takes a person as a parameter and returns a true false value. And it turns out Visual Studio is extremely helpful with this. So let's go people.where. And inside here, we see that Visual Studio has actually replaced the t, t result of the func with the types we actually need here. So we can see we're looking for a func of person bool a delegate that takes a person as a parameter and returns a true false value. Now I'm just going to use a lambda expression here because I really love lambdas. And again, I have plenty of materials that talk about that. So I'm going to say P, which is our person, dot first name equals John. And so P is our value coming in. And again, this is of type person. And since we're comparing the first name to the string John, this will generate a true false value. So it actually fulfills our delegate. So now when we run our application, we'll see that our output is filtered. So it only shows the people that have the first name of John. And again, link and lambdas are a much, much bigger topic, but it's well worth the investment to learn about them. They are extremely useful in our day-to-day -day programming. So what we've seen here is we can create a method that takes a generic type parameter, and this will now work with a variety of different types. Our get method will work with an iPerson repository or an iProduct repository or any other type that we give it. Again, the only restriction in this case is that it does need to be a reference type so that it will work with the as statement. And again, in a future video, we'll talk more about what those constraints really mean. So that's our really quick look at looking at generic type parameters in methods and delegates. In future videos, we'll be looking at nested generic types, as well as generic type constraints that allow us to specify limitations on the types that we can pass into our methods and classes. In the meantime, be sure to visit www.jeremybytes.com for more information, and make sure to check out the links in the video notes.